So let me show you a problem we have over here at the foundation. Is a crack in the wall that runs right down. Down and sort of all the way through. I mean, I can see six or eight inches of it right here through yeah. the whole foundation wall. And you'll probably see a hairline crack outside. So what do you think caused this? Well, think about it. When they poured this foundation, although it's 12 inches thick, it doesn't have a footing. Right. But also the drainage outside. In the wintertime, the water runs down and it freezes against that foundation. And you know what happens with water when it expands. It pushes against the foundation. And this is just a little, little weak link right here. All right. So I know you've got a plan to address the water. We're much better drainage. You're gonna, we're gonna address the water out there, solve that problem, and Hugo's gonna fix the problem right here. All right, so what's the solution here? So what are you gonna do here, Hugo? Well, Tom, we started off by first taking a grinder and giving this crack some depth so we can introduce the material a little better. Now I noticed that when you ground this, you actually went like a V. Normally I would think that you would have straight uh, groove. So if it was something that we were tucking in cementitious, we would cut it straight. Because we're relying on epoxy and it's low viscosity, we know we're going to bond to the roughness of the concrete anyway. I see. Okay. So the next step that we did was after we ground this, we took some alcohol and just surface wiped the, sur the substrate. And then we're going to start off by applying these ports next. And what do these ports do for us? We're going to introduce the low viscosity resin through these so that it goes into the crack. So you're ejecting this epoxy into the crack for Correct. Us? Yep. This would be surface mounted right here by using epoxy. It's funny. When I see this thing, I thought you had to drill holes in it and insert that in this way. Right. But you're going to mount that on the wall. That Correct. Way. Oh, that's pretty cool. We're going to rely on the epoxy to hold it in place. Okay. The only issue with today is the temperature. It's a little cold. Yeah, it is cold. So we're going to need to run a little heat. Kev, do you mind just turning that heat on for us? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So what Ryan's going to do now is he's going to butter up the back of these things and then he'll be able to surface apply right over that crack that you see there on the wall. Now I'm surprised that when you push that on the wall it doesn't block the hole for the other epoxy to go into. Correct. What they did, Tom, is when they designed these, as you can see in the back of it, they made the centerpiece so that it's protruded. Oh, it yeah, almost acts like a little damp to keep the epoxy from getting in I there. I see. So there's a little ridge there that prevents it as it squishes in. It doesn't block exactly. that hole. Exactly. That's pretty cool. So what he's doing now is he's using that fan tip to bridge across the opening, as you can see there. Oh, and it work his way right down the crack, Tom. Yeah. So this is acting like a little dam. Exactly. So he'll just tool that smooth, and he'll switch over to the other material, which is a low viscosity, almost like water. And that's going to act, like you said, as a dam so that the grout could travel behind it. So that tube that you see that he's using. So that's like an airline fitting to lock onto my gun. Exactly. Well, it locks right onto that port so that we know we're not going to lose any material. So he just pushes that on? He pushes it right on. And if you tug on it, you can see that it locks oh, right into yeah, place. Oh, yeah, you see it moving. They'll keep him from losing any of that grout. And even though so. we can't see it, it's flowing into our crack It's flowing behind. into that cavity behind, correct. Uh, there it is. And there it is coming out at the top. We got some good back pressure, and at least it didn't lose out from the outside, as we can see here. So right. once you're done pumping it all in and this crack fills up, yep. how long for it to dry or set up? Before you remove anything off, we like to give it at least two days. Two days. Yes, so exactly. You, so after two days, you will remove the stuff on the front? Correct. We're going to take that right off, grind the substrate, so that when you look at it, it's aesthetically pleasing. So the big question is, is how strong is your repair? It's very strong. I mean, typically concrete. What did you think this is? This wall, this is an old wall. Could be 2,000, 2,500. But you got to remember, concrete continually ages and over time. So this might be almost 3,000. So if that's 3,000 PSI, what's your fix? So at seven days, you're about 6,500 PSI. At 28 days, you're, they're talking about 9,000 PSI. Your fix is three times stronger it's than a wall. Than a concrete. We're in good company. Yeah. yeah. That's All what right. makes it structural. There you go, Ryan. Thank hey, you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for guys. having us. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.